Welcome back to Release Radar. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today Rome Tools announced their raise of $4.5 million in seed funding. This is a major development in an ecosystem that looks ready for a large shakeup over the next year or two. So where are we? What does it mean? And what is Rome anyway? The JavaScript ecosystem has been fairly stable over the last five years. Webpack has reigned supreme and has come out with a major version approximately every year. Most meta frameworks built over that time have built on top of Webpack, including Gatsby, Next, and more. Recently, Vercel, the company that makes Next.js, hired the lead maintainer of Webpack, effectively privatizing Webpack due to the volume of commits that come from just that maintainer. Alongside that development, there has been a rise in two major facets of the JavaScript tooling ecosystem, ES Module's first tooling and tools built in compiled languages. ES Module's first tooling has come around over the past few months in tools like Snowpack and Vite. These tools are often powered by Rollup under the hood and prioritize code written as ES Modules in development and for production. Often these projects are at odds with Webpack due to the focus on ESM causing differing priorities, such as significantly faster boot times to develop. JavaScript tooling built in compiled languages is also starting to get more popular, with Webpack competitors like ESBuild and Babel competitors like SWC coming out of the Go and Rust ecosystems respectively. These tools often promote massive speedups and compilation times and focus their marketing on performance gain. We can see these performance gains realized when projects like Parcel choose to take advantage of. Which brings us to Rome. Rome Tools is founded by Jamie and Sebastian and wants to eat every JavaScript tool it can. Their fundraising slide deck contains this slide, which describes how many tools they intend to build into Rome. And when I say build into Rome, I mean build in. Rome is a 136,000 line TypeScript project with zero dependencies on third-party code. Currently, the only publicly promoted piece of functionality is a linter, but the goal is a vertically integrated tool chain that powers package installation, testing, bundling, and more. The vertical integration attacks a very specific problem, that across projects like Babel, ESLint, and others, different ASTs are used, leading to compatibility problems between projects and the need to reparse a single file multiple times to apply different transformations for different functionality. So why did they take VC funding, and what does that mean for Rome? Well, according to Sebastian, when he realized that he wanted to work on Rome full time, he also realized that funding via Open Collective and other sources wasn't going to be enough to fulfill the vision. Working solo on it full time would accelerate a project he was already working part time on, but it wouldn't be fast enough, and he wouldn't have been able to hire a team to build out more ambitious plans. Now, taking VC funding sets the company on a very specific path into the future. The way VC funds work, they disperse their capital amongst a number of different companies, and very few of those will succeed. So the drive is for those few companies to make very large outsized returns on the investment, while the others will make nothing. Rome, by taking VC funding, is hoping to be one of the few that makes it. So we're looking conservatively at a 10x return on the current investment. Rome now has to return 45 million to investors if they never raise another round. But given my experience with VC funding, it would not surprise me at all to see at least three more funding rounds in the coming years, with each round bumping the valuation of the company and the returns required to be successful. VC funding is extremely common in the JavaScript ecosystem, with meta frameworks like Next and Gatsby being powered by VC funded companies. And it doesn't stop there, with hosting platforms like Netlify being VC funded as well, as well as NPM, JavaScript's package manager, which has since been acquired. Most of these companies have some form of open source, but not all of them are built around open source. Netlify, for example, has open source, but the platform is not open source itself. Gatsby and Next follow an open core or as a service style model, where much of the code is open source, and they wrap it or host it as a paid product. This can be seen in Gatsby Cloud and Verso. Rome seems to be following in similar footsteps, where the Rome software is available under an open source license, and they intend to ship SaaS services that are potentially also open source around that Rome core. Where does that leave us as an ecosystem? Well, probably with a lot happening over the next couple of years. VC funded projects like Next are privatizing open source components like Webpack, which will force community funded options like V, which are gaining steam to use alternative options. And Rome seems to be taking a huge bet on vertically integrated TypeScript tool, which is a major project that I see take quite a while. In addition to that, we have compiled languages building faster tooling. What are you planning to use to build your next project? And what do you hope is mature in a year or two? Let me know down in the comments.